Ran into a problem. <laughs> Child up. Damper on our scamper. That was a shocker. Oh, wow. Yeah. It looks terrible. Yeah, I've never seen one do that. <laughs> we should be good to go now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Woo! She's dirty. Blue smoke. Pissing scary. You're oh, slipping. I, was... I love doing this stuff. That's a good walkie. <laughs> Rolling dirty. Yeah, girl, get it. Maybe. Chow. That's concerning. That's it. Oh, milk on him. Jamming out. Dingleberry. Oh. <laughs> Shoestring polish this thing. Jamal Jr. <laughs> That's great news. Almost free. Get out here. Dang, old son. Cool. <laughs> That's pretty hard for. What? No. Shirley. That's a, what did we do wrong? Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's my eyes. <laughs> yeah, funk it. You miss <gasps> Play Doh. Oh, Lord. Perfect. Calculations are correct. Woo! Nonsense. Get her down. Ralph, it is sick. Dang. <laughs> Hammer down. Working on his hand. <laughs> Slowly. Seriously. <laughs> Go all out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. The circus somewhere. What the heck no? Show! We don't want to hurt the donkeys. Well, that was a close one. Hey, don't no, mean she, she broke. broke. That's unfortunate. Oh, being so good. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fine. So heavy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Put the thing on there. <laughs> woo! Oh. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pop belly. Pinky out. Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. We're back and we've got an engine build, a budget engine build, okay? Maybe you've got a worn out motor somewhere, you know, you're wanting to do a rebuild at home, maybe with your kids. Well, that's what we're gonna do here. This is a 5.9 Magnum out of a 99 Dodge Durango. We're going to put it in our 74 Mini Winnie. Woo! So this is gonna be a big upgrade for us. The 5.9 Magnum has a roller cam, has better cylinder head design, more powerful, has fuel injection. This engine, you know, is not terrible, but it's got a quarter million miles on it. So we're gonna tear it down, go through it, put new bearings in it, new oil pump, new rings. We're gonna hone the cylinders and we're gonna do all this at home with no machine work on a budget. Let's get tearing into this thing. Maybe you'll learn something along the way or maybe you'll teach me something. If you watched the last video in the RV, we've already pulled the cylinder heads and even taken stuff off and kind of gave it an assessment that it needed bearings and stuff. We're gonna go ahead and pull the lifters out of here and we're gonna keep all this stuff in order, like the direction it was sitting and everything because we're reusing these so we don't wanna get them all mixed up. We're just gonna set them right back in there and we'll just grab one piece at a time and clean these things. One piece at a time, following Jesus. He's at nine. <laughs> So you can see that these lifters are directional, even though they're roller lifters. See that little groove there? That goes to the top when you put them in there. It is important to keep up with which way they're going. Now we got one lifter here that's stuck in the bore. You don't want to really force those out unless you just have to, especially with flat tappet lifters, they'll mushroom and you'll scar up the bore. So we're not going to try to force them out of there. I'm just going to hold him there. And once we get the cam out, we should be able to drop him out the bottom. And maybe we can hone that bore out and see if we can get it to slide in and out freely. If you got that one you really can't grab good if you turn the engine over that bad boy will pop up and it'll be a lot easier we got all our lifters out except for that one that's stuck in there and now we're going to pull the timing chain off it's a little sloppy whoa okay so this should just pop right off like that right there we got a new timing chain because you unless yours just doesn't have any slops you really need to replace them this is the cam retainer plate here and it has a little thing here that directs oil over to the chain so you want to get that oriented correctly so this is what keeps the cam located at the correct spot in the block some engines don't have this but usually a roller cam engine will have a retaining plate like that I usually leave the bolt on or put the cam gear back on or something when I'm pulling the cam. You just don't want to beat the cam bearings out of it when you're doing this. We don't plan on changing this cam or the lifters because, well, one big reason is they're very expensive. About the cheapest cam you can get for this is like 400 bucks. And same thing with lifters, they're like $400. So if everything looks okay, we plan on reusing these parts. And if it doesn't look okay? We'll probably reuse them. Because <laughs> we heard the engine run, it was fine. Come on, you little booger. 
So let me show you one of the big differences on why we're swapping to a roller cam engine. As you can tell here, this is a roller cam and this is the flat tappet cam that we took out of our 360 in the van. See how much wider and more round these lobes are? So that allows the valve to stay open longer, a nicer ramp rate. You can't have a lobe like this with a flat tappet cam. And with a roller cam, you got a roller wheel rolling on top of this, whereas a flat tappet, you have a completely flat piece of steel just rubbing on that. So it's always a good upgrade to go to a roller if you can. And this is a really cheap way to do it without spending big bucks on a, on a retrofit roller cam. This engine still had decent oil pressure. It had about 25 pounds hot idling and about 60 when you're on the throttle. It looks like our cam bearings are pretty good. They look like they're in better shape than our rods were. Oh man, look at that cam bearing there. Oh no. Man, we just ran into a problem. What happened to what? it? No, oh, that. World. That is crazy. I mean, this engine I just talked about, this engine had good oil pressure. And that cam bearing, I have never seen one come apart like that. That's incredible. Unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to put cam bearings in this thing. That one's starting to do the same thing. You see it? Oh yeah. I was just talking so highly of it. Look at that oh, look one. look at the hunk out of that one. <sighs> you see the hunk out of it? That thing didn't make no noise or nothing. I know, that's crazy. Let's see if our lifter will drop out from the bottom. Of course it did. So I don't know what was going on with this guy here. Maybe we can see a spot on or something. But it did not want to come out, did it? Mm -mm. I don't see anything that's scary. Yeah, just... We may just have to hone that lifter bore out a little bit. It may have had like a piece of grit or something in it. If I just wanted to get the block hot tank and cam bearings put in it, is that something you could get to anytime soon or no? Okay, so is, you're talking weeks, right? Or months or something? <laughs> All right, well, um, I appreciate your help. Oh. I don't have a cam bearing install tool. Oh my god. So. It's a damn new slide. <laughs> We're gonna have to make something work. I thought maybe he could like just wash the block and put the cam bearings in it for me, even though I just talked about not using a machine shop. And he's like, no, it's like months out. What's wrong with it? I've never seen one do that. Look at the back one looks perfect. Yeah. This one is completely. Child, child up. Yeah. It's like marbleized. This one's starting to peel, that one's starting to peel, and the front one looks perfect. Damn it's right. crazy to me that that thing had that good of oil pressure with old oil in it and everything. Yeah! I mean, it had, good, it had great oil pressure. Yeah. We thought about not even tearing this thing down. Mm. Yeah, I probably... I'm glad Sad we would have been... We would have been stranded in South Dakota with a blowed up Could you engine. imagine us, like, just leaving it and putting it in there? All the stuff, and then yeah. going, like... This is going to put a damper on our scamper. <sighs> This is why you need to tear one down because you run into problems like this and we have just immediately hit a wall here. If we would have took this out in the last video, <laughs> I didn't think nothing about it though. It had good oil pressure. I called a machine shop. I called some auto parts stores. Nobody has a cam bearing tool even. So I'm going to have to come up with a cam bearing install tool and a set of cam bearings and I'm going to have to put my first set of cam bearings in on my own. Mm. Never done that before. But. You might come watch a YouTube video about Yeah, we'll it. watch a video. <laughs> So I just ordered one off Amazon. Use the Prime membership. It's supposed to be here in two days. I just ordered the cam bearings from Summit Racing. They're just down in Georgia. So usually we get that kind of stuff sometimes next day even. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll have all that stuff here by the time we get this thing cleaned up and ready to go. The cam bearing tool is like $60 and the cam bearings are like 30. So didn't add too much to it. And we can use that cam bearing tool over and over again. I got a universal one that can work with anything. Didn't stop us dead in our tracks, but slow us down a little bit. Well, let's go to the bottom end of this thing now. Ah. Hopefully we don't have any more big surprises. That's a big deal. That was a shocker. I would have expected that with the engine we took out of this thing that was wore out, you know? This one doesn't seem wore out. Do you ever work? I worked for two hours today. Oh, wow. I actually had to go to Athens and work. We came by your house with a Galaxy and you were at home the other day. Oh, the wagon? Yeah. Yeah, I seen the video. I yeah. Was, see, I was working then, too. Oh, okay. Look at this one. Oh, my. You ever seen a cam bring do that? No. I haven't either. It just started oh, like... that's pits. Yeah, it just started like flaking apart or something. The back one looks perfect. The front one looks perfect. This one's starting to peel. That one's starting to peel. And this one's done peeling. It looks terrible. Yeah, it does. Look at that. I've never seen one peel like that. Now, which motor is this? That's the one out of the Durango. It does have 250,000 miles on it, so... But I couldn't believe it didn't have low oil pressure with that. Yeah. 
Wow. Crazy, huh? I've never seen one do that. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the pistons and rods out of this thing if I can get them back out of here. Let's see if there's any more surprises in our bearings. We've already looked at a couple rods and mains and everything looked fine so far. Well, he's off. The man, the myth, the legend. I got all the advice I need from Mike. <laughs> we should be good to go now. I almost forgot we need to number these as we take them out to make sure we don't get anything mixed up. Oh yeah. That guy. You showed me that. Got it? I didn't know you had these. But I wanna do it. Get a square and give it a good solid tap straight on. Oh jeez. Oh, that was double tap. Yeah. You can kind of see it there. That's pretty good. It's enough to see it. Got it? Well, of course. I oh. Hey, Wa, why don't you wait until I'm ready? That'll hey, be great. That good. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's a train wreck. A total train wreck. Oh, sorry, Dad. This isn't getting get any better. Your, your right, fingers here, better squeezel. be scared now. Wait till Dad's shaking, Dad. Wait till Dad's yeah, ready. Yeah, they're shaking. Straight on, okay? No, you gotta hit it harder than that. Well, she just passed it. Okay, can I see it? Good job. Mm. Let me have that go on that thing. No. Did you tell me no? No. <laughs> I, here, you can do it. I'm just kidding. It's okay. Here. It's all right. I don't mess that up. Oh, who else My um, two was weak. Give it a decent sized tap there. That's a three. <laughs> <laughs> you had it leaning towards you. Yeah, get it back in the exact same spot and hold it straight I'm up. Saying that's... <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. You missed it completely. <laughs> you got to look where you're hitting. All right. There there you go. got it. Good job. I got it that time. <laughs> I don't even remember where I got those. I didn't know you had those. There's another one I didn't know we had. Oh, yeah. I knew we you had You don't them. need to know about some of the tools we got because you're not safe with tools. I can make me tools. a VIN number with them. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you got to keep your rod caps in order and the correct direction because they usually have a bevel on the side closest to the crankshaft and no bevel on the side of the other rod. Is that just going to pop out? Let's make sure we don't have any cracked piston skirts or anything. Our oil ring there is not sliding too good, which we got new rings for this. We'll probably clean these up real nice, get all this carbon and junk off the piston with a wire wheel. The main thing when you're doing a rebuild like this, you gotta do is, is a lot of cleanup work. It takes a lot of time to get this right. So you can see how our, our rod bearings are kind of, you see the brass and the scratches? That's why we're putting new rod bearings in this thing. See the beveled edge here? That's the side that goes towards the outside of the crank. You put it the opposite way and you're going to have some issues. So we're going to go ahead and pull these old rings out and sit them aside. I think this has a one and a half millimeter ring, if I remember right. So we need to clean inside all these little tracks in there. See how that one's not sliding? That should slide easily. So an oil ring is three pieces. There's a top, a bottom, and a middle. See how flimsy these are? The oil rings are really flimsy. Oh yeah, look at all the crud behind that oil ring. See all that junk in there? Ooh. That's not good. So, who's ready to clean some pistons? Woo! Is that a yes? Yeah. Putting your hands in the air like you just don't care? Go clean a piston, and I'll start taking the rest of them out. She's dirty. There you go, Ralphie. That's yours. Ooh. This thing don't have a ridge at the top of the cylinder, really, so these pistons are really easy to get out of here compared to like an old carburetor engine would be. These are a lot easier. Are they cleaning up at all? Yeah, this one's starting to get better. Okay. Yeah. That oil ring there is completely stuck. It won't spin at all. What symptoms would the car have with that? Any symptoms? It would smoke. Especially under hard acceleration, it would smoke. Basically, you need that ring to float and push out against the sides to keep oil from getting past here up into the combustion chamber. Because if any oil gets past there up into the combustion chamber, then it smokes blue. Blue smoke? Just because she smokes, though. Don't mean she broke. Exactly. Well, hey, Scooter. Did you come to help? Are you being brave today? Huh. Is piston scary? No, it's not too scary today, huh? All right. That is the last one, number eight. I haven't found any cracked pistons or anything like that, so that's a good sign. Nothing I found really worries me. We're already putting rod bearings in it, so no spun bearings or anything like that. We're gonna have to end up polishing that crank, which we kinda knew that, and we're gonna do that at home as well. And it sure is easy to spin them when there's no pistons or rods. Feel that, Ralphie. Cut it? Yeah, give it a spin. Oh, it's wow. It's like no effort at all. Yeah. 
Thankfully, all these main caps are already numbered, so I don't have to do anything with them. But you do want to keep up with the direction they were facing and stuff. There's your thrust main bearing. We're also going to put new main bearings in this. Everything's just going to be standard size because we measured it and everything was standard. Let's see what our rear main looks like. So this is your rear main seal, Ralphie. The bearing smells pretty bad. Yes, it does. The bearing doesn't look that bad. If you've ever torn apart old engines like this, they have a certain nasty smell to them when you take them apart. Maybe some people like it, you know? Let me get out of the scratch test. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we got a little bit of scratchiness there. So we are going to polish these things right here at the house with some sandpaper and we'll show you how to do that as well. Look how nice these three main bearings look. And this one is peeling. Wow. So there's definitely been some debris go these through this fun. oiling system, I think. There's all of our bearings taken out, all of our pistons and rods. So we're down to a bare block now. Let's flip this thing over and look at our bores just to make sure we don't have anything funky with the bores. And it's amazing that quarter million miles and this thing still has crosshatch in the bores. So we are gonna rehone them, but see that crosshatch still in them? That's kind of incredible. Doesn't have a ridge at all at the top of the cylinders. Really impressive that it can run that many miles and not hurt anything in the bores. They're looking better. I got them four done. It's difficult, but it's coming along. Hey, Dad. Yes. Hey, you forgot to get the rings off of these. I leave one? Oh, I'm so oh, two? I left the rings Wait. on Wait. Three? You're oh, slipping. I was definitely slipping. I am so sorry. What are you doing? I thought I took them all off in my head. They were having a little trouble cleaning the carbon off the top in the parts washer, so I'm gonna try a wire brush on it. Come on. Look at that. That's a lot better. Look at this, Wawa. Oh, wow. That wire brush did it, didn't it? That's incredible. I couldn't get that hardly off at all. One thing you do not want with your piston tops or combustion chambers is sometimes they'll leave like a little casting flash somewhere and there's like a little sharp point sticking up. That will cause detonation because it creates a hot spot in the cylinder. So you want to have smooth piston tops and smooth combustion chambers. No sharp points. Let's do another one. 250,000 miles of carbon. Well, that just takes it right off, doesn't it? That's crazy. It is crazy. Looking good. Getting this track thing cleaned out. Incredible. Good as new. Now my new job is clean out ring lands with Ralphie. It's kind of a pain. There's gotta be like a secret to this that we don't know. Probably. But we don't wanna leave all this junk in there. There's even little gas ports in here. They're even stopped up, so. She probably would've smoked, I'd say, under a load. I love doing this stuff. Picking yeah. it stuff? Picking it, mm -hmm. She's a booger picker. Shut up. Whoa. You're gonna think I pick my boogers. Ooh. Not like that booger picker. Boogers? You're just like cleaning things. Yeah, picking that crusty oh. or gooey. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe that thing on Facebook. Who's that? Who talks like that? Either Manny or Mom. It's or Mom. both. It's a mixture of both, you know? Since Rocky is out of the shop, I thought I'd be sweet and bring him some treats. Here we go, babies. That's a good Rocky. When you're too full to eat them off the ground like everybody else, you stick your face through the fence, I'm on feed you. You got it down pat. So there you go. We got a whole set of cleaned up pistons. You can see how beat up these rod bearings were though. You can tell some of them are a lot worse. This one's really bad there. Rod bearings are easy to replace and usually pretty cheap. Now we're gonna start cleaning up on our block. We've gotta get all of our gasket material off of here. I kinda like to do some of this stuff before I even clean it, because if you clean it up before this, then it's know, gonna get it. It's good to pre-clean it probably, but we're just gonna do it this way. We got our little safety holders that somebody sent us in the fan mail, so that's nice. And just some single edge razor blades. This thing had graphite head gaskets, so there's a bunch of this graphite material left on the block. This is like my favorite stuff to clean. You like this stuff? The graphite head. Yeah. yeah. It always has a mess, doesn't it? Yeah. But it comes off easy. You like it because it comes off easy, right? Yeah. Look at all this. That's just junk. That's gunk right there, isn't it? It is. They're like
coming off pretty easy in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not really that bad. I wish we had a hot tank, man. That'd be cool. If we just put it in the hot tank, maybe one day. I don't know how much those cost. Gotta uh -huh. be expensive. Let's do the oil pan gasket. It's probably gonna be a bunch of junk fall out of this now. All that scraping. Yeah. It just has this film on it, doesn't it? Oh yeah, all that junk. Rolling dirty. Are you off your medication? No, I need a rock star, so I need. I'm gonna pull this rear main out of here. See this lip is facing to the inside to keep the oil in there. You can see which way the lip is oriented. You wanna kind of keep an eye on that because you can put them in backwards on certain vehicles. I think we've got most of it cleaned off. We'll probably have a little bit more to do after we wash the block and stuff and see how it is. But this is gonna be it for tonight. It's a school night. We gotta get in bed, right? Yep. Yeah. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you what? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Come on. Yeah, girl, get it. That's a good girl. Come here, cowboy. She's nothing but trouble. All five of them still going strong. They're crybabies, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> well, it actually poured the rain yesterday, so we weren't able to actually do anything to this yesterday. So we actually got our can bearings in the mail today, so that's good. And our can bearing tool is supposed to be here. Ralphie's not feeling the best today. He's a little sickly, so he's not his normal cleaning self probably today. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze is getting our clean table set up. <laughs> Hey, you can't, don't need to touch the floor if it's going to be clean, girl. This thing was disgusting. You need to clean that water out. That water? Yeah. Well, it's diesel fuel. It's green, like, normally. It's, it's not clear. Yeah. <laughs> We got these at the rod run. They're made to clean off gasket surfaces like this. We picked the finest grit. It cleans the metal without scratching it up. That's crusted on there, cooked on there. Here's our front timing cover. Look at the size of that front yeah. oil pan seal there. I think it's about the thickest one I've seen. Too so thick. Yeah, it is. Well, you gotta clean everything. We gotta clean this crank up too. Oh, <laughs> the screaming goat got me. Made me jump. That's great. It, you didn't thought one, you got something, didn't you? Yeah, one of the best things we got sent in fan mail, I think, right there. In order to get these lifters cleaned down inside there, we're gonna drop them in our ultrasonic cleaner. That way we can clean internally and everything. It's amazing how these things work. And that way we can keep them in order sitting here. We don't have to move them around. So we're doing this outside because the frequency of the ultrasonic cleaner messes with the microphone. So it would kind of mess the whole video up because of the sound. Okay. How in the world did that, that stuff get in here? It's old age. Old age stuff creeps in on you. Talking a victim. Oh. What are those numbers under there? Huh, I didn't know they were there. So Squeezy's gonna clean on this this here water pump passage thingy. Tommy cover? What yes, yeah, that. Have you used a razor blade before? Yeah. When? When I was doing surgery on a glove. Oh, surgery on a glove. There was a razor blade involved. Sounds right. 
His name was Jeffrey. before we explained way too many gaskets off yeah. by hand he's been holding out on us the whole time i just bought these you've had this the I, hand I had thing. this i didn't have this yeah and if i'd have known where it was at <laughs> and what it did we'd have done use it many times i think we're ready now to wash the block off this is our first step in cleaning it we'll hone it and then we'll go back and clean it again This is where we cleaned the 454 in that video. I think it's got over 2 million views now. It's got a lot of views. Crazy. All right, let's pressure wash this thing. <laughs> well, oh, a little dirty. Just a tad. So we're just gonna spray this thing down with degreaser and let it soak for a minute. And then we're gonna pressure wash it off. Last time we did this with that 454, we didn't even have a pressure washer then. Hopefully that'll break loose a bunch of this gunk. Look inside the bores. That's from us cleaning that head surface off. We got a lot of trash down there when we pulled the intake. So we got a lot to clean. What are you doing? I brought the nursery outside. <laughs> they haven't been outside really, no. have they? Look at you babies. Look, he's much. like, I know I can escape. <laughs> you gotta get on your back feet, bro. <laughs> well, what color are we gonna paint this thing? Chevy orange or something? I'd go orange because like the outside with the orange straps and stuff. Okay. Okay, maybe. You can already see where it's like got. Yeah, it like cut starts off. loosening up and turning brown on it. One of the most important things, aside from just the dirt that's loose on it, you don't want dirt inside your oil passages or it's gonna do the same thing these last bearings went through, huh? Yeah. You are not fast enough with this <laughs> I know. bottle. I know. Is this one a boy? Yes. I like that one the best because it's colors. Yeah. Us and spotted animals, I know. huh? Are you wiping his mouth off? He got milk on him. Wawa, well, you're doing a great job. Appreciate it. Those will fit a seven and three eighths long oval. Apparently so. It <laughs> seems to fit. We're gonna try to keep it out of our face. Oh. Is your gas on? I didn't turn my gas on. Now. Yeah, you soak me too. <laughs> Perfect protection, Ralphie. Good, good job. Well, didn't Mr. Garcia send those to us? Yes, Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. So I tried to get some of the oil passages and stuff there just to blow everything out, but this will rust super fast. So what we're going to do now is air dry it off. We'll probably put like a coat of WD-40 on it real quick. Man, look how clean it made like where the oil filter goes and oh, stuff. That was all yeah. caked up. Think that's got it pretty good. Ralphie found the only can of WD-40 we had on the property. I'm gonna have to go to Dollar Jam. I don't even know some. where we had that from. Where <laughs> we got that, which we haven't honed the bores yet, so it's not a huge deal. But the bores are really quick to flash mm -hmm. rust, so you got to get on there quickly. Looks like our oil pan rail here and where our mains go, all that stuff. You don't want it to just rust up on you immediately. That's one of the great uses for WD-40. It's really, in my opinion, better as a rust preventer than it is a penetrating oil so you can ask a hundred different people and you'll get a hundred different answers on what to hone your cylinders with traditionally i've used wd-40 
but in the last video a lot of people were saying that you're better off to use things like uh kerosene or mineral spirits diesel fuel stuff like that so i've even heard honing them with soap and water so everybody's got their own thing i'm gonna try the mineral spirits this time because we have it here so we're gonna set this down in here and let it loose now this is a medium grit i think it's 240 grit stone we're using molly rings in this thing so we'll probably finish it off with a fine grit but i'm gonna go over it with this first so this is gonna even out our bores using a hone like this it works like a sanding block so it basically straightens out your bores if you have some dips in your bores if you use like a dingleberry hone it's just gonna go into those grooves and not really straighten them out that's why we're using this kind of hone So let's take a look at it here and I'll show you what it's doing. Very tiny ridge at the top of the cylinder and it is starting to show up where that ridge is. You also see some up and down scratches in the in the bores. It's gonna start taking those out as well. Fixes all your imperfections. It's like block and primer before you paint the car. Trying not to go down too far because you can nick your stones and bust them up. You don't want to come out too far. You don't want to go down past the bore and hit something in the main. At the end of this, we're going to go slower on the speed of the drill and go up and down faster to get our cross hatch into our cylinder. <laughs> so you can see it's pretty much took out all of our slight ridge at the top of our cylinders. Now, if this was a carburetor engine, it would have a lot bigger ridge at the top because they're just harsher on bores than fuel injected cars are. Look how much dirtier and stuff those bores are, all the black stains and stuff in the bore. We're taking all that out with this. See the grit? Ooh. Yeah, you don't want that in your engine, so you gotta clean it after this. We're two down here. This one's not quite as scratched up as this one was. We still have some minor scratches in there. But if you're using like cast rings or chrome rings, you can do with like a 200 and something grit with them. But with the plasma rings, you wanna go like a three or 400 grit stone. I always liked honing cylinders, I don't know. I guess it's just watching the progress as it takes all that junk off the cylinder walls. Thankfully, this thing didn't need to be bored. I nicked the mains right there. That's what you don't want to do. I always squeeze the stones back together before I take them out. I don't like to drag them around the top in case I was getting a scratch or something. We got one kind of deeper scratch in this bore here, but it'd be fine, right? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be fine. feels a lot different over here than over here. feels grittier on that side? Yeah. You'll feel a little bit of scratchiness to it when you get it honed because you need a little bit of texture to it where your rings seat into that, you know. they There's some friction that goes on on break-in, you know. You don't want your cylinders glazed over and slick because those scratches in there hold oil in there and that helps lubricate it so it stays in those scratches. I have a question, sir, teacher. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to say oil correctly because you get made fun of? It's just hard to say. It's a hard one. <laughs> it's a hard one. Are you worried about it? <laughs> I can't help it, okay? I'm, I'm tongue-tied. It's so small. Look at that little guy. It's a little one. It'll go down to a half inch. Wow. Isn't that crazy? What we're going to use this for is trying to clean up that one lifter bore that we had some snags in. We'll see if we can get that lifter to be free in that bore again. These spooled babies. They didn't want to be on the wet grass this morning, so they're all piled on the tractor casings. Can we feel anything in there? Or not? I don't really, I never even saw anything or felt anything, but that lifter was stuck. Here is our medium stones. We just took them off. We're going to switch to our fine grit, which is a 400 grit stone, and this will get our correct surface finish for the type of rings we have. Now, if you had cast rings, we wouldn't be doing this step. It would be done already. Are you still cleaning that old pan, baby girl? Yeah, it was really bad. It looks a lot better now. I think. Good. When you have a brand new stone like this, I like to go ahead and put whatever liquid you're using to hone. That way it soaks into the stone. Look at that. It just absorbs it. Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. This is what it looks like after the first stage. We still got some small scratches, but we're probably going to have some small scratches here and there. It ain't going to be perfect. So now we're going to finish off this board. Now watch. So much slower, much more up and down. If you ever watch a honing machine work, this is how they do it. Up and down, big long strokes like that. You can see it's starting to make like an X pattern in the bore. Right, how's it look? It's good. Look all right to you? Yeah. Get a little X's in there? Yeah. That's what you want. You want all your X's in there. I thought they was in Texas. Oh, well, that too. Metal. 
All right, that's the last one. So let's clean this grit out of here. Hopefully we have a decent cross hatch in it now and got most of our imperfections out. We need to get some oil on this as quick as we can so it doesn't rust out. I'm gonna give it another quick degreaser bath here, rinse it off with some water and we'll dry it and coat it with uh, some more WD-40. I'm gonna show you some of these oil passages here once we get it rinsed off. You can learn a lot from how the engine oils by spraying air or water through some of these passages. Trying to rinse these bores out instead of down into the bottom end, you know? All right, so let's go through this. Oh. So, so see it goes through the oil filter and right into the back main right there. So that's an oil passage going straight through to there. All these mains go up and feed the cam bearings. So you'll see, see down there, shoots oil straight up to the cam bearings. When you get an engine back from the machine shop, if they've done some serious machine work, you always need to run brushes through all these passages and your crankshaft will have passages as well where it goes back and forth through all this. You ain't cleaning all morning. It's already trying to flash rust immediately. Spray some WD-40 in there and I'll kind of wipe it around Make sure we get it all coated with WD-40. And this will just keep it from rusting until we finally install our piston rings. I cannot believe this can has ran out. Imagine I that. I had to get a lid for it for like a spray can model. <laughs> Somebody must have gave us that for free. I thought we found it. We didn't buy that, surely. I thought we found it in the car. Squeezel, you cleaning your saddle? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to use it on the donkey. Where'd that saddle come from? Oh, uh, we picked this up at the local landfill. The best place to get a saddle is at the landfill. They're exactly. cheaper there. Are you proud of the mess I made on the door? Oh yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Let's roll this thing back in. Oh, it's slipping on these rocks. Oh, yeah, that's why you need them blocks. Calm down, Squee. You sprained me like everything. Oh. oh man, look at that. Brand new. Look, we got a little dent we got to knock out, huh? Is that a dent? That's factory. Well, I think there it's a dent. was a lot of junk. It, it was very dirty. You did such a great job. Well, let's see what our lifters look like after. Woo! Ooh, it's dirty. Oh yeah, it's got some oil in it now, doesn't it? Whoa! Wow! What in the world? Look at the link bars. They were solid, nasty, dirty. Look at that. Look like brand new metal. Wow! It's incredible, isn't it? They're hot. Feel how hot they are. I, burned I don't know what 50 degrees Celsius is, but it's hot. We didn't have to get them out of order or anything. We just sit them down in there. That's really incredible how well these things work, isn't it? Yes, it is. Considering I didn't even know uh, they existed a while back. Look at them steaming. Super high frequency and it just scrubs everything off of them. That's crazy. That is crazy. The wall wall couldn't quite pick this one up. It's probably about 80 pounds of crankshaft, I'd say here. We're gonna kind of rinse it off and then we're gonna polish this. That's the oil passage in there. Out your hydraulic lifters pump up the oil pressure. Watch this. That's why your lifters make all kinds of noise when you lose oil pressure. We went in for this and came out with that and that. Oh, what is that? Brownies? Ooh. I thought I was going to be on a diet. <laughs> Man, I appreciate my wife having a servant's heart and going to the Dollar General for me. I know that was tough for her. <laughs> now we got some WD-40 we can soak this stuff with. So all these journals, you can feel a little bit of scratchiness and grooves in it. Nothing terrible, terrible. I mean, it's not like awful. It doesn't, I don't think the crank needed to be turned, but we're gonna go ahead and try to polish those out. So I got some 400 grit sandpaper here, wet or dry sanding paper. Try to sand that out of it. So oh, you, yeah. you shouldn't be able to feel anything with your nail like that. Pretty good size right there. We're gonna take some WD-40 and put on the sandpaper, wrap it around here, and then we're gonna shoestring polish this thing. Who in the house doesn't have shoestrings anymore? It's mom. Really? Uh, now Crocs don't have laces. Well, it's, what are you my, it's my tennis shoes. <laughs> I barely have any shoes with shoelaces. I either wear flip-flops or cowboy boots, pretty much. Cause you're a cowboy? Well, obviously, look at me. So we're wrapping that around there a couple times and we're going to work it back and forth like this right here and try to work that out of it. I don't know about you, but it is almost impossible to get an engine in the machine shop around here. There's just not enough machinists left in this country. If you do get one in a machine shop, you got months and months to wait to get there. Yeah, they're not on our time frame, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, it took a lot of that coloring off there. 
it's feeling smoother. It's still yeah. not completely done. It feels a lot better than that one looks does. looks better. Let's just keep doing this. First time polishing the crank? Yes. Yeah. Feel the difference between that one and the next one over here. Oh, wow. That's See that? It's all smoothed out now. Yeah. So that feels way better. We don't have any sharp edges now. I'm gonna go back over it with a finer grip, but for now we're just gonna move on to the next one. Me and Mom got an assembly line now going on this, trying to get it polished. I'm having trouble with this end one. Oh yeah, she's slick. Oh yeah, she's good. That's crazy good. Yeah, that's so much better. Like, hear it? You can hear, you can hear it. it. Then nothing. So it's feeding time in the nursery. <laughs> While I was feeding all the little babies. I named this one Milo, JJ, Jamal Jr. Cause he looks just like Jamal, he? Looks just like he Jamal. has that same white spot. Yeah. I think we got it all done now with our 400 grit. I don't feel anything that catches my fingernail. So we're gonna go back over with 600 just to polish it up real nice and we'll have this crank done. Okay, you've got her clean done. <laughs> you painted your horn, ain't that this something horn? Still working on it. And what are we gonna do with this saddle? We're gonna um, chain it up. Hang it up at your swing set? Yeah. Awesome. Are you nervous about the shop? Oh, it's gonna fit mommy's lap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We got a little assembly line going here. We got Ralphie on the water pump. Wawa's cleaning push rods, and I'm still polishing. And Squeezy's on the saddle. Yeah. I'm repainting it black. That's great news. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. This is my third one. It takes a oh, while. Okay. Well, I think that's it, guys. So we went over it with 400 and 600, and that is good enough for... The girls we hang out with. Exactly. Well, I thought it was too it's what the That one works too, either way. It all feels really nice and smooth now, so that's the way you can polish your own crankshaft at home for almost free. Whatever these things are, I'm taking off for putting them in the ultrasonic cleaner too. <laughs> Get out there. I'm gonna rinse this thing off now. We're basically sanding metal, so it's gonna have a little bit of metal on it. We also gotta blow out all of our oil passages in this thing. I'm gonna sit these heads in here, let them soak for a little bit too. We still need to uh, take these apart and lap the valves in, put new valve stem seals in them as well. A lot of work, a lot of cleaning, a lot of prep. Let's see what our rockers look like in here. Oh, wow. wow. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Is that not crazy? Look how shiny the push rods are. Where this, this big tray thing was yeah. black. Yeah. I, could, I couldn't have scrubbed that off there. That's incredible what that thing does. The postman just stopped by. Actually, it's a post lady. Yes. And we actually just got our can bearing tool from Amazon. That's a nice case. Ooh. Dang, old son. <laughs> Lousy day. So this is like your guide at the front. And this is like a plunger. We got our can bearings here. Best I can tell, only the second one and the fourth one are the same as each other. All these are different. Like this one has one hole. These two have three. This back one's really tiny. I'm gonna start out with our really bad one here, our third one back. And I've already test fit it and selected the correct cone. We'll get it right there. And then I'm gonna hold the end of this with a wrench right here. It's expanding and tightening up into that bearing. So now it's tightened up there and we should be able to knock it out the back. Yes, it is. There you go. Cool. Now we can loosen this up and pull that little cam bearing out of there and Looser see what she looks like. and let her go. Man, look at that thing. Isn't that Good. crazy? I have ne it's, look, it's only on this half it's, of I the think bearing. it's starting on the top. Hello. That's crazy. It's kind of like brassy looking there, but that is incredible. Now, that's what she started life out as right there. We got to make sure we line these holes up because if you clock it a little bit and your holes don't line up, then it will not work. And if you see, this is wider than this one. That's what I was about to say. Is that well, okay? This is for a 360. This is for a 5.9 Magnum. Best I can tell, the only difference between them is the width. They'll interchange. I couldn't get a 5.9 Magnum in time. So I got a 360 one. Cool. I'm going to wipe all that nasty oil and dirt and stuff out of there so we have a clean surface that we're putting this bearing into. Now we're going to put our new bearing onto our tool here. Tighten this down so it holds the bearing in place now this is funny to me even though that has three oil holes this one went to nothing the one over there went to nothing you can see the outline of it so the only one that matters is right down through here straight through from the mains so that's what we're going to try to line up we keep it straight up like this that should line straight up with our oil passage if i put it in right there Now 
Is that good? Yep, that's fine. So we're lined up with our oil package, so that means the can's gonna get oil. Alright, let's move on to another one. What was that? I said, oh, <laughs> there she is. See that hunk out of it? Yeah. That's really weird. It must not have been made out of the best material or something. I mean, why else would it have hunks taken out of it? I don't I don't get that at all. It looks like the inside of an anthill. Just saying. Yeah. That's what we need around here, Ralphie. Yeah. Right there. Look it. You're pretty good at this whole can bearing thing, Walt. <laughs> That about went out the other end, didn't it? <laughs> it's got a big chunk there and a really big one there and that. The odd thing is you can tell there's a big difference in pressure between the top and bottom of the bearing. This one has three holes as well. Only one of them does anything. That's so weird. Seems like a pretty destructive way to install bearings, doesn't it? Yeah. It's pretty hardcore. I think it's right there. there. It stopped. I'm not changing the other two. The, what? The front one looks just fine. And that back one, I don't have that plug for the back of the cam bore. So we're changing the three that look bad and we're leaving the other two. Deal with it. Put it Incredible. in the comments. Incredible. But hey, oh, this man. tool, 60 bucks on Amazon, it's approved. Check us out on other platforms at SleeperDude88. Here's your test on whether or not you got it lined up. See the light coming down through that oil passage? Okay. That's a good way to know if you got it no. correct or not. Shirley, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find a famous old woman named Shirley, and I'm going to put her on the screen every time y'all say Shirley. Shirley! That's what I'm going to do. we got to test fit our can to make sure all our bearings are in line. We use the alignment cone, but it is our first time doing this. I had a small block Chevy at the machine shop one time, actually for my wife's car, her wagon. And when I got it back from the machine shop, the cam would not fit in the cam tunnel anymore. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, I test fit them first thing. You live and learn. It's a lot easier to put the cam in before you put the crank in because you can get your hands in here to help it through without beating the bearings out of it. That's unfortunate. What? What? No. It's not going back in there. What? What did we do wrong? It won't go back. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, <laughs> it is tight. Well, if you get your cam bearing just a little bit out of place, it won't go in. And that's apparently what we've done here. Okay, well, we gotta figure this out. Looks like our fourth cam bearing, the one that was really bad, must be in there a little bit crooked. We're gonna knock it back out and reinstall it and see if we can fix this. Okay. Scraping something else? Yeah, it's like all I've done today is scrape things off. You've been a good cleaner. You have a little bitty edge on there where that cam just was not wanting to go. So I got some 800 grit sandpaper. I'm trying to get the edge off that before I reinstall it. Just barely a little bit more. Right there. Okay. It's a little bit off. But... That's factory. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll... Fit this time. Hey, that's better. So it was just a little bit off. I don't know what it was, but that one, that back one just didn't get in there 100% straight. Yeah, we should be good to go now. We took a break to put the saddle up. Oh. You don't know. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, no. No. Okay? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somebody hold this phone. Let me help. Oh, my baby butt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you hit me with it. Whose yeah. idea was this? <laughs> it was terrible. It was mom's. Oh, grab, grab, grab. How are we supposed to get in this thing? I'm getting in this. <laughs> it is mine. I know how I get on these things. Wrong foot, but that, I think you're going to fall if you try to do that. I don't think you mean that. Oh. <laughs> you're underestimating. <laughs> 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 You're welcome, Squeeze. <laughs> Mission accomplished. What could possibly go wrong here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're gonna wash this thing off one more time just to make sure we don't have any grit or anything on it, and we're gonna start final installing parts of this thing. That's exciting. It is exciting, isn't it? Every single time you have to flip they all through look every the same. single look, one. Every one of these things looks the same. It's like, oh, is it the star? Is it the hexagon? Is it the trapezoid? Which one is it? Wish we had a hot tank, huh? Yep. 
We're gonna spray this thing down with some bright cleaner now. So we can get all that WD-40. Oh, that's my eyes. <laughs> we can get all that WD-40 and stuff off of it. And it'll give us a good surface to paint to when we paint it. I've got some conventional motor oil here and we're gonna wipe down the boards with that to keep them from rusting until we can get the pistons in there. But we gotta start by installing the camshaft. Then we can move on to this because it makes it a lot easier to put the cam in when there's no crank. So I got this Melling engine assembly lube. We're gonna put it on all these cam lobes. So I would normally put like a paste style if this was a flat tappet cam, but since this is a roller, we should be good to go with just this. This is pretty thick stuff. You like this? Yeah. If I knew I was gonna run an aftermarket computer, I would probably be upgrading the cam to a bigger one. You don't want nothing real big in an RV because you start losing bottom end torque and horsepower. But since we're planning on running the stock computer right now, we're just putting the stock cam back in it. We also got some of this assembly paste. I think it's Redline brand. It allowed me to get free shipping on my order at Summit Racing because it bumped it up to over a hundred bucks. So I bought this assembly lube just so I could get free shipping. I'm putting some of this on the cam bearings back in here because I just want to make sure they're lubricated good considering I put them in. Make sure they're not going to do anything funky at startup. Yeah, funky. First part going in the engine. Now is this final install? This is final install. Thank well, you, Jesus. That's the plan. They also make handles that go on the end of these camshafts. I've never owned one of them. I'm sure that would be nice to have. There we go. All right, that feels nice now. Now we're gonna reinstall our cleaned up cam retaining plate here. I'm making sure we got our little oil dipper deal there. I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts so they don't back out on us. I have no idea what the torque spec is, but I think that's pretty close to it right there. Hey, man, so good. Hey, Mr. Red, why do you good? Yeah, I'm good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lifters in. I like to actually leave them like submerged in oil for a long time, but the only reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want to get them mixed up on where they went. If these are brand new lifters, I would have put them down in an oil jug like that for a few hours. This was our treble lifter right here. This one in the very back. So I wanted to try it out first and make sure it's good to go now. Oh, look at that. So our little home job fixed it, I guess, whatever was wrong with it. Now we made sure that all our rollers were good because you can't have like a bearing going out in your rollers. Everything we see with these appears to be good even though they are like a 250,000 mile lifter. It's kind of incredible how long some of this stuff will last on newer model engines. Used to, you got an old Model T or something, they didn't last that long. Of course, a lot of them didn't have oil filters or anything, you know? All right, here's the last two. Everything looks good on this. Now with anything with building the engine, every time you put new parts in, you wanna spin it and make sure that everything's still working like it was. Cause you build the whole thing and have something stuck, you have no idea what was stuck. Feels good. So here's our spider deal. And this holds our dog bones down. It's like spring steel. That's what keeps all your lifters in line. If not, they would spin and mess everything up. Same thing here, I just put a little bit of uh, Loctite on the threads so we don't have anything back out on us. What would you give not back out? <laughs> exactly. Now we can flip this over without losing all our lifters out, which is very nice about roller cams. We should be able to set the crank down in it now. I'm gonna put some of this oil down in the passages between the mains and the cam here. So it's got some lubricant. We're gonna pre-lube this motor as well as I always do. Here's our new main bearings. Look how dirty they are. This is why you need to clean everything that you're about to put in there. Straight out of the box and they're a mess. So these are standard. The crank's never been turned in this engine. It's the original. We actually looked at the back of the bearings. They're 1998. So they're the original bearings in this thing. If you have a really messed up crank, they'll have to turn it 10,000 sun or 20,000. So you need to tear your engine down and make sure you know if yours is standard or not before you just order some sort of rebuild kit. I've done that before where you order bearings or pistons or whatever before you got tore down. It's not a guarantee that it's standard. I've even heard of engines that have never been out of the car and the factory had to end up turning the crank or, or boring it out because they had a problem at the factory. So always gotta check that. This is our thrust main. So it has a bearing surface on the sides which keeps the crank from walking back and forth. We'll have to check our end play once we get it done. But I'm gonna pop this thing down here. See only half of these bearings have a, a hole in them. And if you put this in, like if you put this bearing in there, mm. your engine has no oil. So you gotta make sure that you got the bearing in the right spot. See the tang? It's yeah. called a tang. See the notch for it? So that goes on that side right there. Okay. There you go. All the way down. You did it right. 
Even though we didn't have any machining done to this crank, I'm still spraying through all these oil passages because there may be something in there that's messing it up. So we're gonna go ahead and check our bearing clearances now that this crank is cleaned up and make sure we didn't sand too much off them when we mm. polished it. So we're putting this in dry so we can do our plastic gauge. There's also no rear main seal in this yet. So this is just mocking it up to check our clearances. Do you know anything about building it? engines? Look, he's like, milk, milk, milk. You just ate. You literally just ate. This little belly is just full of everything. This is called Plastic Age. And basically, it's little kind of Play-Doh stick stuff that you put in there. You tighten the cap down to it, depending on how far it squishes out. This is your measurements here. So if it squishes out this much, you got 6,000. If you squish out this much, you got two. They make it in different ranges. You can see two to six thousandths or one to three. So this should be about a three inch main. And the normal rule is you want one thousandth of clearance for every inch of journal size. So a three inch should be around three thousandths. <gasps> Play-Doh! Yeah, that's basically what it is. So. You can see you got a little stick here. That's how wide it is before we tighten this down. And we're gonna set the cap down. You wanna do this dry and you do not want to spin the crank while you're doing it. So it says to torque these to 85 foot pounds. That's a little girl, right? Mm hmm She's sure there's some milk somewhere. There's 85. Oh, Lord. It looks like we are dead on three thousandths. It's not two and it's not four. So we're good to go on the mains. We're following the directions on the Felpro rear main seal. And it says to put some RTV around the back edge here, the cap. So we're just gonna put a little bit on here. Since when did you follow directions? I'm trying to do better. The bigger lip here goes towards the inside, towards the oil. I'm gonna stick this thing down here. This is a little shoehorn tool to get in there without cutting the lip. I'm just gonna put a little dab of sealer on the ends of it. And I like to offset them just barely. That way it's not breaking right at the cap. I've had good luck with that. And I'm gonna lubricate the lip here that's gonna come in contact with the crankshaft. I'm gonna use some of this thicker stuff in here on the mains just so it sticks in there better. Big heavy boy. This is just a small block one. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this ARP Molly Lube on here. I had some of this left over because we've built several engines lately. And I'm just gonna put it on the back side of the bolt there and on the threads. That way we get a more accurate torque reading. And we're just reusing the old main bolts here. Like butter. Perfect. It's reassuring. Yeah. I soaked the chain in oil for a second there. We're gonna go ahead and put our timing chain set on because our other one was a little bit floppy. So you got your timing pointers. You just want to line them up and you're good to go. Oh, don't cry about the baby kitty. <laughs> She's crying to, about the cats. Right there. See our dots are lined up. You got a dot here and a dot there. That means you're in time. You double check it at work. If my calculations are correct, this dot is a little bit to the right of this dot. Oh, I'm joking, it's fine, Dad, you're good. I got a little bit of thread locker on there again. I've been cleaning all these threads with brake cleaner before I put it on there. Once again, we want to rotate this engine over, make sure it feels free. It actually feels really nice. Woo! That's nice. Certified. Yeah. Approved. Well, that's going to be it for today. It's got late. We have worked all day out here. A lot of cleaning today. Anytime you have something like this oiled up and clean, you definitely got to cover it up. We have not always done the best job at that. We will come back tomorrow and start popping pistons in this thing. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. She wow. Up until this point, they didn't have their eyes open and they are crazy now. What have you guys him to, honey? I don't know. I'm the only one up. It's early in the morning. I'm going to go ahead and put all the rings on the pistons before everybody gets up. It's kind of repetitive, but I'll show you how to do the first one. Let's get to it. So you can see here, it tells you which ring goes in which groove. So <laughs> pay attention to the flaps before you just open this thing up. You put this part on first, it's super easy to go on. And with rings, you usually don't want to line your gaps up all in the same spot. They may meet back up, but you really want to clock this stuff away from each other. So once we got that on there, we can go ahead and put the bottom oil ring on. Right there, right there. And these rings here, they don't have a dot or anything. So it doesn't matter which way you put these on, but it will matter with the top rings, usually, not always. Okay, so there you go, our oil rings on. Look how free that is compared to what it was. Kids did a good job cleaning the ring lands out. If you look, this one's completely smooth. 
but there's a mark right here. So this dot means this goes to the top. So you gotta make sure you look for stuff like that. Before I put the second ring on, I'm gonna go ahead and test fit it in the board to make sure our ring gap is correct. Should be, these are standard and they're not supposed to be filed to fit or anything. So I'm gonna take one of the old pistons and use it to center it up in a bore. Like that right there. We'll check and see what this gap is. It looks like we got 24 thousandths in there, which should be just fine. It recommends a minimum of 16 thousandths. Most four inch bore blocks, you're usually in the 20 something thousandth range. Unless you run a bunch of boost or nitrous, then you might need a little more. Well, let's do the same thing with our top ring here, just to go ahead and check it as well. If you're the engineer type, or if you're building a race engine and really worried about it, you'd want to do this on every single cylinder. It looks like the top is basically the same 23 thousandths. So we're good to go. Well, it recommends with this to not spiral these on. You're supposed to basically spread them out to put them on. I guess I should own one of those piston ring install tools, but I don't. I guess I'm just gonna have to do this all by hand, wear my thumbs out here. So I'm just gonna squeeze this apart. There you go. Yeah, my thumbs are going to be hurting by the end of this. These top rings here, they have a little mark right there that tells you it's the top. It always scares me to put them on this way. There you go. One down, seven more to go. There you go. That's the last one. Golly, my thumbs feel like I've been playing Nintendo all day long. That's what they look like. You can see the difference there where it's got the plasma molly ring on top, a cast ring in the middle, and your oil tension rings down here. We got all of them ready to drop in. Well, if it ain't Sleeping Beauty and her daughter over here, you're stepping high today, aren't you? <laughs> you ready to put an engine together? Yes, yes. I've already drank my rock star. Look at you, Mr. You, Get her down. You missed that step. Oh, well. <laughs> She's extra this morning. What's wrong with her? It's the rock star. Apparently we so. We haven't on doubles yet. Coffee and rock star. That's not good. One thing we have got to do though, before we put the pistons in, is we have got to check in play on the crankshaft. So I'm gonna set this dial indicator up here. You can get these dial indicators cheap. Nothing fancy here. Ralphie is sick. Yes, he is. I Poor guess he's buddy. got the stomach virus or something. He's the only one that's sick, which is surprising. Poor Ralph would like to be out here building engines, but he is couch instead. Poor little dude. But him is not feeling well. So it's supposed to be between five and nine thousand. So we got it set up here and zeroed out. I've got a little bit of rearward pressure on this. I'm gonna slide the crank forward. We got six. So we're right in the middle of the specs there. Should be good to go on that. Now, if you didn't have the correct amount of thrust, you can actually sand the thrust main until you get the correct amount of clearance, but we're good to go. We're actually gonna use this to compress our rings. Now, these things are not very expensive, and if you're doing a lot of the same size bore, they're good to buy, they speed it up a lot. I bought this because I built a lot of four inch bore engines. It's super common size. If it's not a common size, then you probably should use just a regular piston ring compressor. I've got one here that's like a ratchet, since a band that slides around it. I really don't like using it if I don't have to. Since I do have this, I'm gonna use it it'll help us a lot we got to make sure we turn this the right direction so we got to look for our beveled edge on our rod here so see the bevels right here mm -hmm. so this goes this direction right here we got our new standard rod bearings here now there is no hole to line up on any of these because this thing oils through the crank there's our old bearings right there you can see the difference in how worn out they are versus what we're putting in Dang. I knew it was coming. So we're going to install this first one dry. We're gonna check our rod bearing clearance with our plastic gauge again. And if it's good, we're gonna hammer down. We're just gonna coat the skirt of the piston and the rings here with just regular old conventional motor oil. That's what they recommend from the manufacturer of these rings. The bore has a light coat of motor oil on it as well. Take our little cone here, sit this through it. Make sure your studs for your rod are not gonna hit your crank journal. So you gotta kind of guide them through this process. So this cone gets smaller as it goes down. So it just naturally compresses your rings for you. Makes it super easy to install. There you go. There you go. So we got our smaller plastic gauge now. So this measures one to three thousandths. This should probably have about two and a half thousandths. Probably anywhere around two to three thousandths would be a good number. Working on his hand? No, I'm just Just hanging out? Yeah. These are supposed to torque to 45 foot-pounds. 
right, let's bust them loose and see what we got. Wawa is double checking our torque specs because we remembered we have a Haynes manual here that somebody sent us for a Dodge Ram. Right at 2000s, which is right where I'd like for it to be. So we're good to go. There you go, 45 foot pounds on those. And once again, you want to turn the engine over every time. Make sure there ain't no new problem. Still feel smooth. We can move on. I'm kind of proud of our hand polished crankshaft. Yeah. With our shoestrings, huh? Who wants to torque these? Me. You don't want to squeeze? You don't want nothing to do with it? Mm. <laughs> Pull it till it clicks. Slowly. <laughs> Slowly. All right, go ahead. Oh, it clicked, didn't it? Yeah, it clicked. There you go. You got to torque. Now we need to spin the engine over. See, it still feels smooth. Good job. It must have got hot outside, huh? Yeah. Decided to come in here in the shade. And that's number eight. We kind of got in the groove there and we all had our little jobs to do. Wawa torqued all the rod bolts for us. We kept spinning every time. It seems to be doing good. No problem so far. There She's you go. taking this so seriously. <laughs> Still feels good. I think we did the best we could with what we had. Here's all our old bearings we took out. Look how much brass was showing on a bunch of these. They're in rough shape. That one's the worst one. But it still had like 60 pounds of oil pressure. It's kind of incredible, isn't it? We got our pickup tube clean here. Made sure we got our screen nice. We're gonna install this on our oil pump and get our oil pump on there. I dabbed a little thread locker on there just so this thing won't back out. I usually weld them, but this old one wasn't welded. So I guess I'm gonna put it in this way. So it's got a spot. You gotta make sure you get your oil pump drive shaft in line before you tighten this up or you'll break it. Ours is not in line currently. Oh, there you go. So we got to drop down in there now. We're engaged on our oil pump drive shaft. Haynes manual is, says 30 foot pounds on the oil pump bolts. I'm gonna bring this over now that it's held tight to where it's supposed to be. Should be parallel with the oil pan rail. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the front seal out of this timing cover. If you're gonna go, go all out, right? Yeah. We gotta keep this new one flat when we put it in. I'm cleaning all the oil off this surface here where the timing cover gasket goes because I don't want it to be oily when we put this on here. We're going to go ahead and put our timing cover and water pump on kind of as an assembly because they take the same bolts. Oddly enough, about half of these go into either oil or water passages. So some of them do, some of them don't. The ones that do, we're going to put thread sealer on. And we got our brand new gasket, which is actually like a metal gasket with a rubber coating. I, I really like that, actually. See, that one goes into the lifter valley there. I don't want it leaking. Now, if I had a dollar for every time I ran into that dipstick. Oh my gosh, it's about killed me. I wish we had them all on video. That would be a great little compilation there. We got a brand new harmonic balancer. If you watched the last video, these things are famous for the harmonic balancer failing. There's the center. There's the outer ring. That's all that was left. This is the relief cut for the external balance on 360. This one has it as well. We're going to try to install this before we tighten our timing cover down. That way we make sure we have it centered and we don't mess up our seal. There you go. There's our keyway. I got this install tool. I got this thing at LS Fest a few years ago and like they were selling it cheap because it one attachment missing. We use it all the time though. You look for the discounts? Looking for them discounts, just like discount Daryl. Think you got a big enough wrench on it? Uh, it's the only thing I can find. It's like an inch and five sixteenths or something. I didn't have a wrench big enough. <laughs> Hopefully we can put it on this monster. That's hilarious. It'd be nice if we could take this pulley off, but it's all made into it. You're gonna need a pedicure after all this, all I gotta say. What do you want, Joe, now? <laughs> there we go, Wall. Look, he's spotted right there. Random goat crossing. This is supposed to be 135 foot pounds, according to Wall, so she can hold it still. No, can you need to hold it? Oh. You're picking her up. It's. It. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we may have to tie like, that up when we have a flex plate. I'll weigh less than 135. Oh. <laughs> you may have to let her be like mom okay. hold to it. There we go. 
Incredible. Finally worked out. That's kind of a hard one to torque, isn't it? Now I feel comfortable tightening down these timing cover bolts because now I know they're centered up. We had to actually put new bolts in the bottom because mom lost the other one. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know where they're at, but somehow we don't have our timing cover bolts. Even though we bagged everything, we took off. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Squeeze cleaned the timing cover, if we remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Oh. So could explain some things that right there. That explains it all. Well, you can't find her to ask her <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> She's off with a circus somewhere. We're gonna have to trim off the excess from this timing cover here, which may be kind of hard to do considering it's metal. We don't want that sticking up into our oil pan gasket though. What the heck no? That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, it's just rolling that metal up in it. <laughs> hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, like a sardine can. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down with brake cleaner and just make sure there's no oil on the surface at all. Oh no, is he gonna fight with this stuff in the mirror? This is the second time we've had to go do this in like a few weeks. I've never seen him look in the mirror before, have you? Mm-mm, he's taking inventory. He's like, what's changed? Yeah, what's changed since I was in here last time? Poor Rocky, did him scare you? You're okay. Was he flinching again? Yeah. What we're doing here is we have some dents in this oil pan. This is the original pan off the motorhome. And we got some big ones down in there if you look. Somebody must have tried to jack the van up by it. I don't know what they did. I'm gonna keep trying to hammer some of this stuff out. This one's so far down in there, I'm having to use my dolly on the stick. This is a new oil pump. This is the dipstick tube for the 5.9 Magnum, but we're using the oil pan off of the 74 model 360. We're gonna make sure that our pickup tube height is correct. So that is eight and a quarter. And this is like a little over eight and a half. So we're we're good. Right where we need to be on that. Cause you know, you gotta leave room for that sludge in the bottom. Ain't that right, honey? That's right. You know, give her a little space for that sludge since we ain't gonna never change oil in it. I'm gonna put a little RTV where these part lines are across the front and back as well. And then we're gonna put our oil pan gasket on here. So this is the final install? Final install, ma'am. There, there's RTV out, it's the final install. All right, that's what I like to hear. I really like these one piece oil pan gaskets. The old timey stuff with the four piece gaskets. Just a lot of room for leaks in those. If you don't know what you're doing it's got a really thick seal around the front here doesn't it mm -hmm. and on top here we're just going to put some at the corners you got the bolts for it mm -hmm. i'm always afraid with like changing out rear main seals and, and oil pan gas i'm going to create a leak every time you don't want to just crank one of them all the way down tight you want to just barely give it any and go around all of them kind of crisscross around Thankfully, this gasket has metal rings in it. You can't over tighten these really. Like once they hit that spot, they stop compressing. You always want to finish tighten stuff like this by hand. You don't want to run it up with impact. Well, I think the bottom end of our engine is done. Awesome. So exciting. So we're not going to put all the accessories on because you probably couldn't fit it in the van with all the accessories on it. We're going to get the heads on here now, but in order to put the heads on here, we've got to get the heads ready. Let's cover this thing up and get started on our heads. Do you remember the quickest way to get the valve springs? off the valves. No, I'm not, I'm not. All you need to take them apart is a socket and a hammer. Give them a good brisk smack like that. And the locks and retainer will just come off right like that. And you just go to the next one it's really quick. Look how easy that is. I wish it was that easy to put them back on. There you go, it's just as easy as that. So here's our valve stem seals right here. So they just sit down over the guide and they got a little rubber seal. And they may still be good, but I mean, the Felpro gasket set came with brand new ones, so we're gonna use them. We wanna keep these valves in order of where they came out. So when we pull them out, we're gonna set them just right over here exactly the way they came out. Look at that. Show! And all that build up on there. This will allow us to clean up our combustion chambers, clean up our valves. That's a. Uh, Quarter million miles of burning oil from the bottom of that intake being blown out. Cheap gas and everything else. Yeah, we can get that off of the wire wheel though. So this ought to help performance as well, you know? It's gotta be hurting a few donkeys, huh? Yeah. yeah. We don't wanna hurt the donkeys. No, we love the donkeys. Yeah. These valve stem seals are really easy to get out. You just grab them like that. A lot of the old engines just had like a little O-ring that sat on the valve stem. If we're this far in, we might as well do it. Can you put those in the trash where they belong? That's right, in the trash. <laughs> You're such a turd. See all that junk down there? That looks terrible. How black these chambers are. Let's see how much we can help this out with a drill here. 
Oh, wow. Look how much better that looks already. They can actually get all the way down in the intake. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Check this out. Here's one right before. Now watch what this wire wheel does to it. Look how much better that is already. It still has some stuff on it, but probably a couple more passes on it. I can get that thing completely clean. That's got to help. I'm going to go ahead and lap the valves now. Now this flat surface right here, that should be completely shiny and smooth. And you can see it's very pitted if you're looking right there. So I've got some valve lapping compound here. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of it on this valve. We're going to stick it back in there and spin it with a drill while we pull back on it against the seat. And it's going to grind in a new surface on that and make it seal up. So the last thing we want is a burnt valve out in the middle of nowhere in this RV. Tighten it down, spin it and pull it towards me. And I, every now and then I'll pick up on it like that and let the compound get back in there. And exhaust valves are always worse than the intake. They just see a lot more heat. Let's see what it looks like after that first pass on it. We want to do that until basically all those black specks are gone. See, that's not far away from being a burnt valve and it not sealing up at all and you having a dead miss. Yeah, there we go. Couple more passes on it and all them black specks are basically gone and we'll have a much better sealing surface. Probably will raise our compression even a little bit. Let's do the rest of them. Well, that was a close one. I literally ran out of grinding compound on the very last one, but we got a nice finish on there now. So we got all of our valves lapped in. And as you can tell, it's pouring the rain outside now. So I'm gonna stick this down inside the parts washer for tonight and we'll assemble these things tomorrow and get done with this engine. Golly, these cast iron heads are heavy. They're still buck wild. It quit raining finally, it's the next morning. Ralphie stayed home from school today because he had a fever yesterday, he's not supposed to go back to school or something. I don't know what the rules are. He's got some coffee in him, so he's ready to go, right? Yeah. I think everybody in the house drinks coffee except me, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's having trouble waking up too. You being a good shop kitty today? Little phone snap, yeah. Say hello, everyone. Hi. The valve stem seals come with this little protector to keep the valve stem seal from getting cut. So you just slide it over there, and then I just take a socket that's the same size and give it a tiny little tap here. There you go. And you can pull a little protector off. The purpose of these is to keep oil from getting past that point into the port and into the engine. So you can kind of determine what's wrong in your engine by when it's smoking. If it's sitting in traffic and it smokes like crazy and fouls plugs and stuff like that, uses a bunch of oil if you're driving it real easy, that's valve stem seals. If your car smokes really bad when you get on it hard, usually that's your rings wore out. You can kind of tell what's wore out by when it smokes. But remember, just because it smokes... Tell me she broke. Exactly. What are you doing? He just wants to hurt something. Where's the other guy? Now we're not driving nails here. You just barely tap it. No, get it centered up first. There you go. So we don't want to cut the rubber. A little more. It'll bottom out. There you go. Feel the difference where it bottomed out? There you go. We ran our springs and retainers and locks through the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's crazy how it just completely changes what they look like. You're the lock man. And get that grease right there. You know what to do. Not your first rodeo with this, is it? They make a couple different style valve spring compressors. Fancy people have like pneumatic ones that hold it down for them. That's the one I got. Oh, that's that's aggressive. Okay. It sits pretty high on it, buddy. This one does. Yeah, right there. Right there. He's inside the vet. <laughs> Where are you at? Oh, you're in the back. I see you. We got both of them in there. <clears throat> Just wanna make sure it looks like it's sitting correctly. We'll tap that with a hammer when we get done just to make sure it's seated. Couple things I like about these cylinder heads, the nice heart-shaped combustion chambers. I believe all of the small block Mopar heads are 18 degree valve angle, which small block Chevy guys would die for. I mean, that's race heads in small block Chevy world. Later model Magnum heads have beehive style springs like an LS motor. So a lot of good things they have. <coughs> yeah.
This just seats them in there. Make sure there's nothing wrong. Sounds good, looks good. We already got the second head done. If you remember from the last video, we have two broke off intake studs that we did not do that was already there. So my plan is to try to weld a nut on these and heat it up and try to back them out of there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So now we can put that on there. This is a 5 16 stud and this is a 3 8 nut. So we can fit it right over it, weld it to the inside and hopefully it'll back out. Hey, what'd you give a nut back out? Look at how hot that thing got. Ooh, ooh. See if she'll back out of there now. Oh, wow. The bottom of that stud actually protrudes out the bottom. I wonder if that's how it got rusted up in there. I'm trying to get it pretty hot here so it'll break loose. Please work. Is it turning? I think so. Is the stud turning? I mean, oh, yeah, it's working. Yeah, it is. What a deal. That's awesome. Probably should have done this first. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Rebuild the head and then realize it can't be fixed or something. <laughs> what is he doing? Uh, he definitely totally feels better today. Yeah. He ain't done nothing for a couple of days. Are you going the right way? Yeah, it's about to snap off, I think. Yeah, that's not Yeah, turn. it snapped. Uh -oh. <sighs> that's unfortunate. Let's try this again. You could work. Oh. This is real deal Hollyfield right here. Yeah. Come on, work with me this time. Nope. It's gonna snap off again. Why don't you weld it like on the back side? I can try. We need this to come out. There we go. Yay. Good idea, Ralphie. Look at, that. Look at the sparks coming out. I see it. It's on. Good deal. Probably should run a tap through these threads, huh? We should try this gold maker. I think I've lived long enough without coffee. I'm good to go. <laughs> I don't like how it tastes. I'm going to clean all this off with brake cleaner just to make sure all that diesel fuel and stuff is off of here. So here's our new head gaskets. You can see they have some little extra sealing. And if you touch them, feel they're they're like tacky feeling. Are they graphite? Yeah, they appear to be a graphite gasket, which I'm really not a super fan of graphite gaskets, but they do fill in imperfections pretty good, which we get a lot of imperfections. You're close. Yeah, we're on the dowels, aren't we? Yeah. Let's torque this thing down. Thankfully, these head bolts do not go into any water passages, so we don't have to put thread sealer on these, but we are going to put some more of this ARP ultra torque on it. But we reused all of our stock fasteners. We haven't bought any rod, main, head, bolts, nothing. This is just all reused stock stuff. So it says we take them to 50 foot pounds and then we go back and do 105 is the spec on that. Yeah, son. I think I only did like 75 or something. You want to do the 50 and I'll do the 105? I want to try the 105. Oh, little sick puppy wants to try it. It's all this. You getting ready? Jamal, you're being so good. There you go. A lot of cylinder heads, you torque them from the center out, like in a clockwise pattern. If you don't know the sequence, that's usually what I go with. My arm's already tired. <laughs> Take your break. Ralphie's going to try 105 foot-pounds now. He doesn't weigh 105. Oh, my right butt cheek. Your right butt cheek? <laughs> I got this. No. No, no luck. Maybe when you're 100%. You're not 100% yet. You were right there. You were literally right there. I barely moved it. There you go. That's installed. Let's get the other one. Once again, you gotta make sure all these gasket services are dry and clean. Right, Ralph? Yeah. Before we put the other head on, I'm gonna go ahead and sit this intake down in the parts washer because see how greasy and nasty it is? I went ahead and took the sensors out of it so I didn't hurt any sensors. But look at it fill up in there. Line me up, Ralphie. Get out. Yeah, we good? Yeah. We're on the dowels, we're good. He's had the same number of head bolts as a Windsor Ford or an LS engine. You know, like a small block Chevy has a lot more head bolts than this. Point that zero at 50 and you're good. I understand now. It's all coming together, isn't it? Yeah. Even though we clean these up, I want to blow through them because they got to get oil through them, you know. See the junk come out of the back end? 
pants off. Yeah. Okay. Get that out of your mouth. It's verifying. Get it out. You're I want to make sure. I'm going to put some grease on those tips here in a second. Check. Hold on, my bifocal. Yeah, it's 105. There you go, 105. Yeah, you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, buddy. Okay. Get them all? Yeah. Anything where there's metal and metal contact, I like to just go ahead and put some grease on it, you know, some assembly lube on it. We got our rockers all cleaned up here. Now these, you don't have to adjust them or anything. They just bolt right down. They're just pedestal mount rockers. With us reusing all the factory equipment, we'll be fine. But if you're changing anything in the valve train, you want to check. Like when you get it tightened, you want to make sure that you have the right amount of preload on the lifters so you're not messing something up. I kind of like how it has like built-in factory guide plates here for the push rods. That's kind of neat. The Fords don't have that. So to make sure your holes in there are clear. We already blew everything out. That way it's gonna oil the rockers. Some of these, the valves are open. You can see it's pushing the valve shut when we're tightening it. What are you doing in here? Are you sleeping in the motorhome? You lazy cat. I see it. They're all doing the thing, opening, closing. Doing what they're supposed to do. Sounds like it. It looks like it. I don't feel anything weird. There's so many parts to an engine in there. There is a lot. These don't scare me so much. Transmissions is what scares me. You look inside those valve bodies. I really like these gaskets too. This is a steel core, like rubber gasket. And the 5.9 Magnum, another upgrade here is that it has twice as many valve cover bolts as the old 360 does. So why don't you throw that back on there, Ralphie? This is probably way less likely to leak than that old 360. Or gasoline engines. Well, that's good to know. Yes. I always wanted to turbocharge one of these. I had a 78 Velari wagon. I actually bought a 360 to turbo it and put it in that car. And ended up the car was so original and clean that I never did do it. I'm surprised that she did because that was years ago. It was such a nice car. I have two studs. All original paint. The same people we got the Savoy from. Same people that had the 52 Ford truck. And I had planned on swapping the engine. Just never, never did it. And now, uh, Discount Daryl, a.k.a. Bad Daddy Braddy, has that car? He does, yes. We're going to go ahead and stick the plugs in it just to make sure it doesn't get any rust or junk down in there. We're using NGK plugs. I'm a big fan of them. If you've watched the channel forever, this is the kind of plugs I ran in the Maverick, in the LTD, in the Starlet. So, I'm a big fan of NGK plugs. These were gapped at 43,000, so I don't know what the factory spec is, but it'd be fine, right? Yeah. What, are you starting a fire? Let's get our intake back out and see how it looks after soaking in here. Oh, it's so heavy. It's full. It don't work like the ultrasonic does, does it? No. This is the gasket that blows out all the time on these. And they start sucking oil. You can see, just like we showed in the last video, where it's blowed out there. Hopefully our new gasket will fix that problem. That's like... Hard. It's funny how certain engines, certain cars, all have the same problem. Like this plenum gasket, the harmonic balancer, it's just part of it. It's just things you gotta fix on these. What's the problem with the Fairmont? There is no Nothing. problem with the Fairmont, exactly. Yeah. These long runners should give us good low end torque, which is exactly what we're looking for with this motorhome. Should get a decent bump in power switching over to this engine. It's really neat though, the design. So this intake runner comes all the way across, all the way back and then pulls air. So that big long runner, good for torque. Oh, it's coming clean now. I guess it softened it up for me, huh? Yeah. Where'd your brush go, Ralphie? Oh, down in there. <laughs> How are we gonna get that back out? <laughs> we need like a coat hanger or something. <laughs> oh, okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> I was just saying how deep it went. And yeah, yeah, and then it just left, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so now you show up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That was great, Dad and Ralphie. Really good job. This gasket only stuck around where the bolts were. It didn't stick at all in the middle.
No, it's not. Oh, flip it? Yep, that's the way. Okay, there you go. That's the Sit way. Sit on there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> All right, put the thing on there. There are some companies that make kits that correct this problem, but I'm just hoping that the gasket corrects the problem. Mm. You know, it's different than the factory gasket, so surely it'll work. Surely. Or surely, I mean, maybe like 50,000 miles or something before it blows out. Yeah, well, it won't it'll be fun. At least like... South Dakota back home before she Will you leave out. South Dakota, Alice? We're not even headed to South Dakota. We're headed to South Dakota. We're, we're, we're listen, listen, we're, we're going, going back to where we came from. Tradition. We're just going to go back through South Dakota every year. It's just going to happen. See, see if we can make it yeah. farther. And we'll see if we can make it for this point. This is a lot bigger than this. You know, put the cylinder heads on it. No, I know. I mean, it's bigger than I thought it was when we got it out of the Durango. We had the valve covers off, maybe, or something. I don't know. It just seems... Really big. More bigger herb. I guess it's supposed to be big now. We got that all cleaned up. We are not going to final install the intake because I know I can't fit this through that opening of that van with the intake on it. You would think that they would at least put a four barrel on here, huh? Instead of two barrel. Hopefully we can fit this intake underneath our doghouse in there. That would be nice. If not, we might have to modify it, right? <laughs> we might have to, exactly. But man, we got a lot done on this engine. I'm really happy that we were able to polish our own crankshaft and hone our own cylinder walls, check our own bearing clearances. Yeah, pour one out for your homie, son. It's <laughs> the way it's supposed to be. You did it. Good job, Squeeze. We lapped our own valves in. We did it all, didn't we? This should be a good upgrade for our motorhome like we've been talking about. Next video you'll probably see is putting new floor pans in this thing. That's probably something a lot of you guys can relate to. Having an old car with rusted out floors and, you know, you gotta fix it. Maybe you guys will come back and watch that video and learn something from it. Oh gosh. Sprinkling on my legs. Oh, nice. We appreciate you watching this video. We got a whole playlist on us redoing this motorhome. And if you haven't seen some of our other videos, we've got a video of building a small block Ford. We've got a video of building a big block Chevy. I mean, we're always working on building engine stuff. Check them out. Check out some of our other videos. We've got a 46 RE. We're going to bolt behind this and put it in this thing. We're going to have to get our, our drive shaft cut down and make some new mounts and stuff. But that's no big deal, no, is it? It'll be nice to have this thing running on fuel injection with overdrive. It'll be so much better than what it was before. Should be more fuel efficient as yeah. well. Nah, that's my girl. But we appreciate everybody that watches our videos. Everybody that subscribes, comments, likes the video, all that helps. We appreciate all the members. Super thanks. All that is very helpful to the channel. We appreciate it. There you go. But you can check out our second channel at Sleep Dude too. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleep Dude 88. I couldn't understand that one. Mm. Hopefully you learned something from this. If you got an engine at the house, you need to rebuild. You know, don't be scared. You can do it. We did it. If kids can do it, you can do it. Surely. 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 But you can check out our merchandise down below. You can click on it. It'll take you to a website. You can buy it. They'll send it to your door. That's how it works. Are we doing this thing? Even though they had nothing to do with this video, we really appreciate the help of Rec Pro with this motorhome project. Go to recpro.com, use code SLEEPERDUDE. You'll get a discount on your order. What is it, 5%? Could be 5%. I think it's 5 Big thank you to Holly for all their help with our channel. We really appreciate them as well. Let's go see Rocky and buy you. Woo! 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 Hey, Rocky Jr. Rocky Jr., Rocky Jr., Rocky Jr. You're just like your daddy. Here comes, look, here's Rocky. He's shaking his head Rocky. mad. Rocky! You better hurry up. You about missed it. Your boy about got him from you. There you go. He knows when it's the end of a video, don't he? Golly, both of y'all, you getting the last one? Oh no. Oh, there you go. All right, there's Granny. Oh, Granny, get over here. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh here she comes. Hello. There you go. Yeah. She needs her own stuff. vending machine out here, you know? She's got way more calm about it, hasn't she? <laughs> She's a good pig. She's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. She's going over. Oh, she went over. Oh, she's huge. Oh, she's wet. Oh, she's, you're okay. She's wet. Hey, you're okay. Very wet. Don't scare her. She's okay. Look at that big belly. She's so oh, soft with her So the baby calf's doing good, just in case she was wondering. Nephew comes by every day to check on her. That's not a bottle. Milk her. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Rhonda. And all these babies are doing good too. Flower, she's kind of calm, isn't she? She's not too hyper. You can call me Flower. 
I think she's just the cutest goat we've ever had as far as colors go. Hey, baby. I don't have no bottles for you. You got a little pot belly. Bye. The last melon. Bye. When in doubt, pinky out. Makes you look fancy, don't it? For real. What we have here is a failure to communicate. And the kittens are still a mess.